Grace and <clears throat> peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's a good Sunday to bring the gospel, to keep to the basics. Uh, I'm going to take us back almost a hundred years. Uh, how many of you have ever heard the name Houdini? Houdini. I mean, even some of you young people probably heard of him because he was a great escape artist, I guess, magician and among other things. I don't know if everything I've read about him is true or not, but he died in 1926, many years before I was uh, even born. But he could, he could escape things. He could escape. They put him into, uh, uh, they said he had nine, like more nine lives than a cat, but he, he, they sewed him up in a Kansas canvas bag. He escaped. They locked him into a milk can. He escaped. They sealed him into a beer barrel. He escaped. They even put him in a maximum security prison. He escaped. Somehow old Harry got out. But then in October 1926, old man death grabbed Harry Houdini. But before he died, he said to his wife, I might be able to escape this. He says, I'll come back to you one year after the anniversary of my death. And allegedly, his wife lit a candle by his picture for the entire year. But after he didn't show for that year, she found out, yes, death, finally death, was something that Harry could not escape. Well, death laid his hands on Jesus as well. I have tried to put myself in the place of those who loved him so much, the, the women, the men, the disciples, the crowd, those he had healed. We don't know exactly everybody who was there. They didn't know everything. We're looking back at it now. We have it all in perspective. But I've often thought, what would it have been like to watch him die? And then, and then when he rose again, was this real? Is this, is this a magician fake? Or what, what, what is this really going on? But the scripture tells us, indeed, that that's exactly what happened. We know that he was not and is not behind a tomb, that Jesus right now is before us on a throne. Jesus is on a throne. Well, this is good news, and this is just in my little world, my 11th time I've been able to be here on Easter. Starting May 1, I'm going to start my 12th year, kind of a long time for a part-time interim call that I started temporarily back in, in May of 2012, but here we go. You've put up with me, and I love you, and, and um, I've told you before, even my son, my kids say, I think, I think you're in a good spot there, Dad. I think they love you, and you seem to love them, so I, I indeed do. It, it's a wonderful thing. I get invited to all kinds of things. Uh, yesterday, I got a note from Scotty Evans. He and Cindy had a lot of their kids and grandkids down in Sort of the suburbs of Hay, you know, Lower Hay, if you know where that is. And uh, it was fun, you know, and I, I get invited to things. We're going out to the Schlomers after, and I don't know, we're going to have 30-some people out there. That's going to be great. And by the way, do we have, uh, you have somebody sitting next to you there? Uh, Dr. Shirley Richardson, who uh, is 90 years old plus. How old is Dr. Shirley now? 93, God bless her. But anyway, she's been coming here. I know Terry's been looking out after her. And you are our Easter. We, is, uh, hello to Dr. Shirley Richardson. We love you. And she, I think, is our oldest one here, although Ann's just a couple years behind and, and a few others. So uh, Dr. Shirley doesn't often get here. I was able to drop by some uh, last week. Remember I was there, I gave her a Palm Sunday Bulletin and a few palms. That was kind of fun. We had a short, short visit. So glad to have you here. But as I think back, I think of all the, the things that have happened here, good and bad. Many, many people have passed on to be with the Lord uh, in those 11, almost 12 years. It's, it's, it's sad when I think of that part. But then when I look at the children we have here and the new life, and isn't that the way it is through Easter? It's the death and resurrection. Uh, I know Pastor Bay, who, you know, God bless his soul, was here 32 years. And I remember he told me once, Pastor dear John, you know, it seemed like it went that fast. And uh, I, I'm here six months uh, plus 11 years, and it's gone by that fast. So we know that there is a sense of death and resurrection in our life. It's a great Easter joy. So we mourn today for loved ones lost. And I know on these holidays, you think of them. They're your family, your loved ones. Uh, many of our people have lived a long, fruitful life. And we, we were grieved at their death, but they had a good life. Others were taken too soon. Uh, as young men, as young women. 
and we certainly grieve them even more. But we realize on Easter that no one can escape death, not even Houdini, not us. But the good news is, the gospel message is, Christ is risen and we have life forever. And yet, while we're on this earth, we want to have life here. And we want to hear uh, Linda sing, Because He Lives. And by the way, Linda, as you know, has had some many health issues. She gets up here, she called me, uh, or we texted me, and, well, I got this cold, I got this and that. She comes up here and sings like an angel. Isn't that amazing? I mean, just... It's, to me, that's Easter. It's people doing great things, uh, people who are making a difference, little things that, that add up, and we're, we're so, so glad for that. Now, my sermon title was, What If? And it, have you ever thought about what if this had never happened? What if Jesus uh, hadn't lived or hadn't died or hadn't raised from the dead? You fill in your what if. What would life be like? And it, it, I don't know, for me it's kind of hard to imagine. But the text that, the first text that Nick read there from 1 Corinthians, to me was like a, uh, it's almost like a newscast. Now I agree, depending on how you see the world, uh, we, we see newscasts with great skepticism. I think the, 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 the trust level of the press is somewhere, I don't know, 10% or whatever. But I'm saying this is, this has passed the test of time over 2,000 years, and this was an eyewitness account. So Paul is reflecting back, says, I want to remind you of the gospel. I preached it to you, and you received it, which you have taken your stand. And I think that's what's kept this little church going. We, we've taken a stand. Here we are. We, many of you drove a long way to get here, but something about being here and the stained glass windows and, and the life and the kids and being able to mourn our loved ones, being able to cheer the new ones coming in, it really, really makes a difference. And so we take our stand, and, and Paul went on, by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word. And part of that is to, is to hold firmly. I don't know uh, about you, but have you ever kind of taken hold of something like a habit, and you're going to do this one thing really, really well, and you kind of let it go. Like, boy, why didn't I keep doing that? I was walking every day, or I was... You know, <laughs> listen to my doctor for once. Uh, overheard Bud Audie. I'll pick on Bud a little bit. He's been going to some therapy. Makes a difference, doesn't it, Bud? Uh, you, even when you're older, a little bit, every little bit helps the physical body. <clears throat> and I would say that every little bit helps our spiritual soul. So, so a special music by Jake. Maybe even a sermon, maybe a song, maybe a Good Friday. All these things remind us that he is risen, that he is risen indeed. And then Paul went on and said, for what I received, I passed on to you. And I kind of feel that's my part in this. I, I'm the preacher, so the main job, according to the Bible, is to preach and teach the, the pastor. So pass it on, the good news. What's most important? Okay, according to Paul, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. I mean, that's pretty much baseline. We don't, we don't want to miss that one. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day. This, this sounds almost like a creed, much like the Apostles' Creed that we, we read earlier. <coughs> and after that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, he said. And then he appeared to James, all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me. And Paul's always kind of putting himself down, you know, I'm the least of them. Because as we remember, when he was Saul, he persecuted the Christian. So I'm the least of the apostles, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And I would say to all of you that this church started in 1903. Uh, and I think we, we pray for a, a, a Marilyn Wally and all the people from way, way, way back, some of your relatives, and the faithfulness they had, and through the teens and the 20s, this is 100 years ago, and this church really has been here ever since, you know, World War I, World War II, you know, the Great Depression, World War II, all the other, quote, wars, and all the events, the events of the 60s, all of this, but the church is still here. Why? Because we have made Jesus Christ, that was first. We may be upset about this, this, or this, but Jesus Christ, on him we make our stand, and that's what keeps uh, this little church and all little churches going. And so it's true, he is risen, he is risen indeed. I'm grateful for all of you and for what you've done here at this church. And I just ask you kind of a question, how are you feeling this Easter? Are you feeling a little extra joy this year because you've seen maybe new people at church? 
And I'd like to challenge you. I always think about, you know, people say, how, how do you even have a church there? You're in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, I don't know, really. But even though we've, we've done well, do you think there are still people within half hour of here who wake up in the morning without joy, without hope, without a community, without a reminder about the gospel, people who are just lost and alone, who might be blessed by coming into any of the churches, but I'm the pastor here, so I'll say coming into this church. It's not that they're going to find all the answers to life, but isn't it better just to be together? I love watching all of you after church and all these little connections. I always jokingly say when I see a, a young person with an older, older person, meaning me or older, and have you known each other long? And you, usually the younger person says, yeah, ever since I was born. You know, you have all those, all those memories going on and all that history there. But if we didn't have this church, and before that if we didn't have Jesus, and we just kind of went from day to day without any meaning in our life, it's like this is the time to take up your cross and make a difference. I am discouraged about a lot of things in this world, but what I'm encouraged about is the power that each man, each woman, each child has. When you start coming into church, in fact, I saw it with some of you young people, a couple, couple young couples said, we're committed, we're coming here. And then somebody else says, well, so-and-so's coming, maybe I'll come. And, and there's kids, and then the kids say, well, so-and-so's going to be here, and it just kind of builds on each other. But I don't want to say we're done with that. Think about somebody else. Again, it's not that this is the latest, greatest, or certainly not that I am. We all know I kind of stumble around every Sunday. But we do know that Jesus is here, the gospel is here, joy is here. And so your challenge on this Easter is to take that Easter spirit out, make a difference. Drop in and see a Dr. Shirley sometime or make, you know, you, you, you do this and you know how it goes. Ann Emerson was saying what a blessing the Good Friday service was online. And I don't know that we've ever successfully handled that service online because it's usually kind of dark. But, but what Ann said and a few others said that, you know, we went home and thought about that. But there's something about the cross, which everybody went forward and had the, the nails pounded there in the darkness with images of the passion up on the screen. That's power. That's depth. That's pain. And that brings us to today. Now, I'm not going to do this this year, but I'll do it maybe another time. But those are all the stoles that I've collected through the years. Uh, sometimes on Easter, uh, I've had people come up and put them on and remind everybody. But symbolically, I'm going to ask that all of you wear a stole, because that stole is not just for a preacher type. That's all of us who say we believe we have the yoke of Christ. That means the responsibility. So... I urge you to be Easter people, to take on the yoke of Christ, and to share the Easter spirit with everybody you can. It makes a difference. Start people going where they are, meet them where they are, and God will do the rest. So I end with how we began. I want you to respond. He is risen. He is risen indeed.